Welcome to the Fairgrounds Road Church of Christ study time. I'm so glad to be able to share with you from God's Word. I want you to know that we as elders, we pray for you daily. We as ministers pray for you daily. We put you in God's hands because we know He's the only one capable of bringing us through this. One day, all of this is going to come to pass. And when it does, we need to know that we came through things becoming better spiritually. You know, one way, and the only way actually, that we can grow in our faith is that faith comes from hearing the words of Christ. You and I need to take this opportunity that, that we can sit and we can read and study. It's one of these great times that you could sit down and write out some of the scriptures just write them down word for word. Write down a book. Study and gain so that when you're at the end of all of this, you're stronger than when you began. I pray you're taking opportunity to do that. Well, what we're going to look at today is I want you to take your Bible and I want you to open up to Ephesians chapter 2. In Ephesians chapter 2, we're going to look at the mercy of God. Sometimes we don't realize the difference between grace and mercy. And let, me, let me put it to you this way. When we talk about grace, grace we define as God's unmerited favor. You can't earn it. Grace is where God gives you and I what we don't deserve. We don't deserve Jesus. We don't deserve salvation. But by the grace of God, he gives that freely and openly. When we talk about mercy, mercy is where God doesn't give us what we deserve. You know, you take people in a court of law, and, and when, they're, when they define or they are, are convicted of a crime, and now the judge is going to pass sentence, you hear people many times say, I throw myself at the mercy of the court. You know what they're asking for? Don't give me what I deserve. Well, you and I are the same way. We throw ourselves at the mercy of God to please don't give us what we deserve because we know what things we have done in our lives. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, he tells us, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Our sins, our failures, our trespasses where we stepped over the line killed us. Oh, we did it. We deserve it. We're the ones through our actions, through our attitudes, we deserve to be punished by God. God did nothing wrong. We're the ones that decide to sit out on our own and do things our own way. We're the ones that decide that, that we're not going to listen to God and do what we feel and do what we think. We're the ones that have committed great acts of wrong. Maybe through lying, maybe through profanity, maybe, maybe through cheating people, maybe just hurting people in general. We're guilty of that. And so we fall at the mercy of God. And he, he says, you were dead in your trespasses and sins. It killed us. But I want you to look down at verse 4. He says, but God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, but God, because of his great mercy. I like that. I hope you do too. That's a wonderful thing. God, because of his great mercy. You see, the mercy of God, where God doesn't give me what I deserve, came from his love. Mercy arises out of the love of God. And that's what he says, because of his great love with which he loved us. Oh, we can't even begin to understand the great depth 
of the love of God for us, his creation. This eternal God wanting fellowship with you and me. And so here we were dead in our trespasses and sins. But God steps in and he says, let me give you mercy. But that's not all. Look at verse 5. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. You see, he's defining grace in this verse. He's telling us that when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive. We didn't make ourselves alive. We can't make ourselves alive. He made us alive. How? By grace, you've been saved. It was God giving us what we don't deserve. It was God. He's the source of all life. It's God who is the, the only one that can give life back into dead people like you and I. Sin kills us. Sin separates us from God. Only God can give life. And it was because of his grace that he gave us this life. But I want you to back up with me again to verse four, and I want you to see this. He says, but God being rich in mercy. Oh, God is rich in mercy. Rich. I mean, when you think about someone being rich, you think about the abundance that they have, the supply to draw from. Well, to think about God being rich in mercy, have we ever really given that a lot of thought? Oh, he is. And so you and I need to look at the riches of the mercy of God. Now, I want to say something about God's mercy to us. God doesn't give mercy to the unrepentant. No, God doesn't give mercy to the people who are pride, who have pride and, and they walk in their own prideful ways. The other day I was at a store and I got to meet a fellow who owned the store and he and I were talking. And in our conversation, he asked me what I did and I told him. And when I told him that I was a minister, he kind of rolled his eyes and he went, oh, great. I asked him, what's up? what's up? And he said, I gave up on religion a long time ago. He said, you see, I've done so many bad things. He said, in fact, there were two things that he has done in his life that were so huge, no one on the face of this earth could ever forgive him for that, and he will not speak about it. I pointed, you're right. No one on earth can. But did you know God is rich in mercy? Oh, no. He said God can't even touch this. And because of these two particular sins, he's given up on religion. And he said, I'm going to find my own way. I'm going to make my own way. Oh, you know what you're asking for when you do that? You're asking for God's judicial justice, his righteousness to pass judicial justice on you, which means there is no mercy. You will get exactly what you deserve. And there is no grace. You will not be given what you don't deserve. You will pay that price. One of the things we find about the richness of God's mercy, come over, if you would, in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 2. Carrie kind of touched on some of these things Wednesday night. Hebrews, I said Hebrews 2. Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8, as we look at this, he says in verse 12, and he's speaking of a new covenant. You see, through the death of Jesus, God reaches down. And he said, I want to make a covenant. I want to make an agreement to you if you would accept it. And as he reached out his hand, this is the covenant that he made with us because of Jesus. Verse 12, for I will be merciful to their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. Merciful to iniquities. Iniquities are the, is the guilt 
that our sins have caused. Oh, you ever feel guilty? You ever do something wrong and on the spot, the moment, boy, you feel guilty? You know what I need for my guilt? Mercy. I'll be merciful to their iniquities. And isn't that who you show mercy to? Don't we show mercy to people that, that, that are in need, people that have failed, people that are failures? I mean, aren't they the ones that are in need of mercy? Have you ever been in a situation where you did something and after you did it, you realized, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have done that. And the only thing you can do is that when you ask the other person, I'm sorry for that, you know what? You're hoping they will respond with mercy. Don't give me what I deserve. I hurt you. I took advantage of you. I said things that weren't right. Well, God said, you know what I'll do? I'll be merciful to your iniquities. Go back and think of all the things that you can remember. I mean, big things, blatant things that you've done in your life that you're ashamed of. And no one else on earth may never know it, but you. And you know what God says? Here's the covenant I make for you in Jesus. I will be merciful to your iniquities. And in that mercy, I will remember your sin no more. The power of God to no longer remember what I've done. Oh, we've done a lot of things in our lives. We've done a lot of things that cause us to miss the mark. And yet here's God stands in the covenant of Jesus. We sup with him every first day of the week. When we take that fruit of the vine, that is the blood of his covenant. We take that fruit of the vine and, and, and we realize, or we should realize, I'll be merciful to your iniquities and your sins I remember no more. I am so grateful that God has been merciful to my iniquities for I have failed often. And there may be things in your life that you fail often. But you know what? God is rich in mercy. Instead of giving you and I what we deserve, He gives us mercy. We don't deserve that. But He gives it. Because God, God being rich in that, you know, one of the things that you find in the Scripture, if you'll come back with me to Matthew chapter 18, in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus also was full of mercy. Verses we're very, maybe very familiar with here, but I want you to show, I want to show you what Jesus drives at. In Matthew chapter 18, in verse 23, Jesus says these words to us, or to his disciples, and applies to us. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. Let me tell you what the kingdom of heaven is like. Oh, I know what it's like on earth. Let me tell you about the kingdom of heaven. And I want to use an illustration Jesus said to explain this invisible world that God works in. And he's going to use a king and a slave. Now, to, take, to keep from taking much time, you remember the fellow who owed 10,000 talents and the king wanted to have him pay. The fellow couldn't pay. An enormous debt that could never, never, never be overcome. The fellow falls down and he pleads with the king. And the king was moved with compassion and forgave him the debt. He immediately went out and he found another fellow that owed him just a little bit. And the fellow fell down to him and he said, if you'll be patient, I'll repay you everything. He was unwilling to yield. And, and, he, and, he, and he threw him into prison and he sold his wife and his children. And, and he did all of that when the king had shown such mercy to him. 
And so Jesus said, let me use this illustration to you, my people. And listen to what he says in verse 32 and 33. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. See, this is where mercy kicks in, verse 33. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? Oh, God is rich in mercy. The covenant of God. I'll be merciful to your iniquities. I won't remember your sins against you. You know what he expects of us? To use that same mercy on other people. When they're hurting, when they have failed you, you need to be merciful to them. See, that's what God expects. Sometimes within the church, we're not too good at giving mercy to people. People offend us. People do something wrong to us. And immediately we want justice. I have heard it from so many angles that people say, uh, uh, you know, they need to be punished. They deserve punishment. I want justice enacted. Well, I'll tell you, every time you and I scream for justice, we need to think, do you want God to do justice to you? When we were dead in our transgressions, we were dead. We can't change anything. We are guilty. And the mercy of God stepped in. And the mercy of God forgave us. And because of that, we need to use it on one another. That's what Jesus expects. Use mercy on other people. I can't help but think of a, a song that we sing sometimes. You know, we sing spiritual songs. Uh, Ephesians 5, 19 talks about uh, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your heart to the Lord. Well, one of the songs we sing to the Lord, it goes like this. Oh, the grace that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh, do you mean it? Oh, the love. The love of God, out of the love of God springs mercy. Mercy there was great. Grace was free. And we sing that. The question is, do we believe it? Do we stand on it? Do we sing it with a, with a heart, with an energy from within to that, that yes, God is rich in mercy to you and me. Let me tell you, you and I are not going to outdo the mercy of God. You and I will never out sin the grace of God. All you and I can do is be humble about things and to fall down before God, be merciful to me, the sinner. Oh, didn't we find that in Luke 18, 9 through 14, where where the, the, the Pharisee was standing and he was praying to God and he was talking about how good and great he was. That man found no mercy from God. But the tax collector, he was unable to even look up into heaven. And beating his chest, guess what he said? I'll be merciful to me, the sinner. And God was rich in mercy for Jesus said, he went to his home justified. He was acquitted because of the mercies of God. 
We find even in the Old Testament, in 1 Chronicles 21, David went about and, and, and he numbered the people. And you say, well, what was so bad about numbering the people? Well, he wanted to know how many warriors he had, how strong they were, how big they were. And God had already told Israel that he would tell the times that they would number the people. And when they numbered the people, there would be a sacrifice demanded because of the love that God had for the people. Well, David was moved by Satan and David, he wanted to know, go number the people. I wanna know how big of an army we got. I wanna know how many people we got. And they tried to stop him. He wouldn't listen. Then he realized he sinned. Can you imagine the king of a nation realizing the sin that he, is, he has brought upon God's people? He was given three choices. Choice number one, three years of famine. Choice number two, three months to be swept away by his enemies. Choice number three, three hands, or excuse me, three days in the hand of God and his sword. I didn't take David just a second. He said, I choose God because I know my God is very merciful. He knew something about God. And even though there were things that killed people, if there were consequences, guess what he found? mercy. He knew God is merciful. And because of the mercy of God to you and to me, because of the mercy of God that's extended through Jesus, you and I should be extending that to one another. I know there's times that I have failed through something maybe I've said or, 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 or done. And, and you know what? When you've hurt someone, you just want their mercy. You and I need to get better at giving mercy to one another, not exacting revenge. I've known husbands and wives that one of them will offend the other one and they want vengeance. They want accountability. They want, you know, you better be careful walking in those terms. The covenant of God speaks. I'll be merciful to your iniquities and your sins I'll remember no more that you should use mercy on other people. You refuse to do that. You're setting yourself up for God's mercy to stop to you and to me. I heard a story one time, and I'll end with this, about an old bum. He and several of his friends for years lived on the streets uh, they were they were just on skid row. He he drank heavily. He always told stories about his former glory years, and and the other friends of his would make fun of him often, and and they would they would uh, chide him for the things that he said. And he said, "Oh yeah, I just once was an executive, and I was this," and, and they just said, "Now nah, you're a bum, just like the rest of us." Well, one day when they were giving him a hard time calling him a liar about his past. The man looked across the street and saw a rich man coming out of a place. You could tell he was rich by the way he was dressed, by the way, the jewelry he had. And the man, the, the bum pointed across and he said, you see that man, he used to be one of my best friends. And they all began to give him the fits. And they said, if it's true, you go prove yourself. Well, he put himself in a tough spot. He walks across the street to the rich fellow, steps in front of him, and he whispers to him, Sir, I want nothing from you. He said, I just need to ask one request. Would you act like that you know me? That's all I want. No money, nothing else. The rich man looked across the road he saw these gentlemen standing over there and he knew what was going on. The rich man looked at this bum, the smelly, vile bum, put his arms out and he said, Hank, where have you been? Haven't seen you in 30 years. How are you doing? 
And he hugged him, put his arm around him, walked down a few doors to a motel, got him a room, got him cleaned up, got him fed. And the rich man left. For one day, that bum was shown mercy just because he was a bum. And when he came out that next day, he went back to his friends. He went back to living on the streets. He went back to his vile ways. But for one moment, he was shown mercy. Oh, I like that. You and I need to show mercy toward one another. You and I need to be merciful in all things that we say and that we do. For remember, God is extremely merciful to you and to me. Jesus said it this way in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. In James chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, James tells us that, that mercy triumphs over judgment. But people that are merciless, judgment is theirs to the fullest. Be people of mercy because God is a God of mercy. God is rich in mercy. God has a covenant with us of mercy. Be merciful and let his grace reach you. Would you pray with me, please? Father, we come today and we humbly bow ourselves before your throne of mercy and grace. Father, we need you. Oh, we need you to teach us. We need you to strengthen us. Father, we need your ways to guide our steps. And I pray that each one of us now this day will allow you to guide our feet in the ways of righteousness. We thank you. We love you. And we come crying out in need of your mercy and grace, thanking you for the depth of the death of your son in our behalf. We love you and we honor you this day. For Sir Jesus, we pray. Amen. May God bless each of you. And we look forward to our time together again. Take care.